What's up, YouTube Comic Nation? This is your homies, Team Nerd Herd, coming for a very special episode with Ben Schwartz. We're going to talk a little bit about DC and a little bit about Diamond. But let me turn it over to Ben so he can introduce himself. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, my name is Ben Schwartz. I am the owner of Empire's Comics Vault here in Sacramento, California. We also have a small press publishing company called Continuum Press, where we work with artists locally to put out some books. And of course, you can find us on pretty much every social media at empirescomics.com. Over to JR. Um, I'm JR. Um, Sacramento is my home, Nerd Herd, uh, Star Wars, and Marvel kind of guy um alonzo why don't you tell us about yourself um an abby comic book fan and also a pop culture nerd um over to you robert hi guys this is rob rob's nerd haven on instagram and i'm the multifaceted nerd and uh my name's ian you can find me at hood rat comics on instagram and i am the uh group's uh junkyard dog you could say um I'm going to turn it over to uh rogue slaw he's going to tell you more about what's going on with the show what's up what's what's going on jr Okay, well, first I want to preface a little bit here. Um, ben Swartz is from my hometown. Uh, ben Swartz, like he said, is a comic book writer. Um, also, avid community person for with his stuff. Never missed his free comic book day. I mean, it's epic type of stuff. Um, 17 years running in business. And we're going to talk to him today mainly about this whole thing of DC and the impact of them leaving uh, previews. Now, just kind of go to a little background here. Uh, Marvel actually did this 20 some odd years ago. Marvel owned their own distributor and then went into bankruptcy. Uh, now, because of Diamond basically going, hey, we're not going to ship books, DC found a way to ship their own books. And they are creating now a second company. I forget the exact name of it that is shipping out comics. Um, there's, I know some of the smaller presses are doing this also. But we want to know kind of from a retailer's point of view what the impact means for us as comic fans. Because it comes to me, Wednesday, my books are out there. I don't see any difference. But I know there's some type of impact that's on your end, Ben. Yeah, and there's there's so many things to talk about. Um, the 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 first being, of course, that there's now a new distributor. They started up. They did not even wait for shops to open. They didn't wait for things to get back to normal. DC decided that they needed to get right back into it. So they opened up both one on the West Coast and on the East Coast to make sure that comic shops could get their books in hand. Now. That, that itself doesn't sound so bad aside from the fact that most of us were closed during the time. So they kept the numbers low so that we could handle the influx. And I don't know what it means for everybody. I can't assume that I, I know all of the shop's hardships. But myself personally, we were quick to move over to mail order. So it, that didn't affect us a heck of a lot, having our doors closed and still getting comics in. But it's only been uh, recently with the official announcement that they're leaving that people are really starting to speculate on what this means for the industry. So, um, I mean, where do we even want to start with this? Uh, with well, this well, first off, I don't know. I know from another shop here in town that the way they found out about DC leaving was from another comic book outlet. It was not from DC Comics. And then they found out around four o'clock on Thursday, on Friday, from Diamond that DC was leaving. Yes. So the writing was for me on the wall the moment DC said, hey, Ben, you can use Lunar Distributing to make sure you get your books and we're canceling all your orders at, at, at Diamond. Now, they, of course, said I could keep my orders at Diamond. They would just come at a later date. I opted to try something new. And so I went with Lunar and have been getting my books through them. But it was through the DC retailer's Facebook page that I found out as well. It was just... it. They, a few days ago, they're like, hey, we're officially going. But I think everybody knew it was coming because when the new previews came out a couple weeks ago through Diamond Comics, there was no DC in there. So wow. that that was a pretty big indicator that, wow. that things were changing. And we just didn't know how they were going to change 
or what was going to come of it. And now we're getting a lot of speculation. And I really have to place a lot of emphasis on the fact that it, most of what we're all reading is speculation. It's what retailers who have been in the industry a while are seeing repeated. It's what they think might be happening. But a lot of it comes down to the structure of it because both Lunar and the West or the East Coast distributors, they're, they're, they're both pretty much owned by large online comic stores, which creates a lot of problem and frustration and worry for retailers as well. That makes sense. And also the reason I brought up the Marvel from back in the 90s was at that time there was several different people. Diamond wasn't the only one shipping out books at that time. As a result of Marvel trying to do their thing, DC signed an exclusive contract with Diamond, and then Marvel kind of followed suit. So it killed off all those small distributors. And now I'm wondering if we're going to kind of get the reverse of that. Well, see, so there's so many questions revolving around this that haven't been answered. So Marvel is still sticking with these or with Diamond. They evidently, I, I don't know 100%, have a payment plan in effect where they're getting their money that should have been paid to them during the quarantine put back into them. So they're, they, they're attempting to work with Diamond as best they can. But DC taking uh, their own direction has kind of a bigger impact because everyone always talks about the fact that Diamond is a monopoly. They're the only game in town. So when we have frust or problems or frustrations, the first thing we think is, oh, if there was competition, this would never happen. But one of the things that has been coming to light about all of this, especially with Diamond not being able to necessarily pay their bills the first week of the quarantine, is how profitable is it for there to be more than one? Is it worth it for people to have multiple distribution? Because we're not Target. We're not ordering billions of dollars worth of stuff. Each one of these individual shops is only ordering a small amount. Now, if we divide that three or four ways, is it even worth it to have a warehouse? Is it worth it to have employees that come in and ship the books? So we, we just don't know. I mean, the 90s were a, an amazing time for comics. So they could support seven. Right. We don't know what they can do now. So, and, and I know some some companies like TKO is doing directly to you guys. Um, and I know you've said a couple other ones to me in the past that are doing mm -hmm. it on the indie side of it. But I mean, I'm wondering what's for the indie side of it because you're a creator, which that comic that I showed you guys a couple weeks that new did the cover mm -hmm. for. Yeah, this is the writer for it. Oh, nice, That's um, awesome. When can I, where can I get a copy? <laughs> they love they love new, by the way. Awesome. Uh, oh, who yeah, does sure. love new awesome. again? So, uh, uh, yeah. But I'm wondering on that side of it, because I know like you guys had to have a certain amount to get into previews. Yes. Like you had to create a certain volume amount. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, how do you think that might affect you guys on that end? So I don't know that that's actually been addressed. Um, I personally am not worried about that side of it because I order enough um, volume for trades and for current issues and things like that where I know I'm going to meet my threshold but especially coming out of the quarantine and especially that there's still shops that have their doors closed having a minimum that isn't adjusted due to the current circumstances would be a definite problem for someone so I imagine that they're going to address that I imagine that Diamond doesn't want to lose any of our uh, shops because this is trying times uh, they don't want us to go out of business for multiple reasons uh, one of them, of course, being that we are the lifeblood of the comic book industry. Um, so, so I would hope that that's going to be addressed if it has to be. Did you have a question, Alonzo? I thought I cut you off last time. I did. Um, so, Ben, have you, since we're kind of talking about distribution and everything, have you noticed any difference between, um, I guess, Lunar? and diamond with with the dc books and hopefully your guys are you're getting the same um same pricing so th that's another thing that i keep seeing pop up and one of the things that people have to take into consideration when they read each of these articles daily is that the news is changing it, it, it's constantly fluctuating now right now diamond if i ordered a dc book from diamond or lunar i'm getting the exact same cost so that has not changed but a lot of people are talking about shipping. Well, it's not as efficient to necessarily ship 
one shipment from Lunar, another shipment from Diamond. Mm -hmm. But when I get my books in from Diamond uh, on a weekly basis, there are often half full boxes, which means I'm already overpaying for shipping. So getting an, ex an extra shipment, I haven't seen much of a change. Now it will be a kind of a pain uh, in general because I have a POS system that is designed specifically for Diamond and for their books. Now I can input anything I want into that system on a weekly basis, but that requires a lot of time. So if I'm gonna keep using that every Tuesday when I get books, I have to spend another hour scanning books, typing in prices, putting in the title. So, so and that's an hour on a day that is extremely busy for every comic book shop across the nation. Yeah. Hmm. Well, didn't they also, DC, I thought when they went to Lunar, they changed their their open market date or whatever to Tuesday now. They did. And they, they told us, because evidently they got a lot of questions about it, do what you want with it. We're telling you that it can go out on Tuesday. Uh, so I am, although if somebody walks through the door, I'm not going to tell them they can't buy the DC books. I'm not going to push for a DC Tuesday release date because it doesn't make sense for me. I that's it, it is the slowest like cash day for the store, but it is the right. busiest day of the week for me because we've got to unpack, we've got to check inventory, we have to do 600 savers, and having people come in and, and pick up their DC books on that day just doesn't make sense for me. So for me, Wednesday is going to be a new comic book day. It's going to continue. I have a qu I have a question. Would would ordering um, books be different for you now too? Because you would have to do two different systems, right? Yes. So I'm now using the Lunar and I'm using Diamond. So each one of them uh, functions roughly the same. Obviously, Diamond site is much broader because they've had time to expand it. But Lunar's is really simple, and right now I'm sticking to an FOC date. The FOC is the final order cutoff. Mm -hmm. So rather than me trying to navigate and do a month's worth of books like I would at Diamond, I'm just doing the books that need to be ordered that day, or that week. Mm -hmm. So that gives it, it makes it a little bit easier. But the big thing is, as JR mentioned, some of these other companies, um, most notably Alterna, who quit Diamond long before DC did, the problem comes in as to some of these companies getting lost in the shuffle because if I've got 10, 15, 20 different companies that I have to contact on a regular basis to make sure I have books, who's going to get lost in the shuffle? It's going to be the indie books because what am I going to do? I'm going to order Marvel and DC first because that's the yeah. line share of where I pay my yeah. bills. Mm -hmm. I had a question. I don't know if I'm sure you'll answer this one, but um, do we know when is the last day the uh, comic book shops will be getting the last shipment from Diamond? on DC books? Uh, if I knew I would tell you, mm. I stopped using them about a month and a half ago for DC books just so I could test out the new one. So I haven't had any lag, I haven't had any problems uh, in that regard at all. I, I don't know the last date because I was talking to another shop that I frequent. Um, but their cutoff I believe is like two to three weeks is what it is. Um, but okay. what's weird is so the big one, big comic coming up next week is the Batman 92 with the alternate cover. Diamond has cover A, but the one, the cover that everyone wants that has uh, punchline on it yeah. is exclusive to Lunar. Ah. Uh -huh. wow. So they're pulling stuff like that where they're going, you can buy it over there, Diamond, but you're not going to get the one everyone wants so what's, over here. What's going to happen to the uh, that incentive uh, variant because there's a one in 25 that has the uh, um, I think it's the, either the designer or punchline that's on it right uh, that I'm not sure of um, ben, do I don't you know, know. punchline I, punch I, I know I ordered it and I was able to put it in for Lunar so I do not know if Diamond did not get that but anybody who's using Lunar should <sighs> wow it's going to be a, little, a lot of set of people yeah. that doesn't because come through and oh, because I wanted history. that Archim cover for yeah. that yeah. that punchline. And the other thing I heard about the Archim cover, at least from the other shop that I go to, they won't get it necessarily next week. Mm -hmm. They may get it the week after, which is going to cause problems. Oh. But the so, other thing I was going to bring up was now 
I know typically you go and pick up your books, Ben, from yeah. the center. But with the new DC, you have to wait for the truck to come, don't you? And the two I, different so companies. I do, because they're using FedEx. I use, Every Tuesday morning, I go bright and early 8 a.m., pick up my boxes from UPS for dining so I can get going because it takes me all day to get everything done. Lunar is FedEx and they deliver it to your door. Now, that's actually not a problem. And this is something that I'm hoping Diamond will take note of and change in their own because although books aren't released till Wednesday, I get my Diamond books a day early, which seems like it would be a lot of time. But again, it's a huge scramble. It's a long day. I'm trying to make sure everybody's safe and good right. I get my Lunar books from FedEx on Monday, which gives me time to open them, sort through them, do inventory, so that when Wednesday comes and you start filling savers, it's a, it's a little bit of a relief. That it's not quite as uh, high strung that day. So I don't know why we couldn't get the same thing from Diamond. I'm hoping uh, that as the questionnaires come in, that we'll be able to express that to them. Because I don't know if it's a logistics thing or if it's that they don't want us selling them too early, but having that extra time uh, is just absolutely fantastic. So I, uh, I have a question. So I've been talking to a couple shops here in San Diego and they're not happy about it. They, I think there's a movement for shops to stop ordering DC books as a protest. Um, so that means I'm gonna have to order all my books at one shop and then my DC books at another that's participating in Lunar. Um, mm -hmm. Is the same thing going out there in Sacramento too or is this just a San Diego thing? So I, people are reasonably upset. And there's many reasons they're upset. And this boils down to one of the things I keep seeing pop up. So first off, I, I'm gonna start by saying I'm an, an amazingly optimistic and positive person. And I it, I don't yes. see problems, I just see solutions. Mm -hmm. And it, the fact of the matter is this is the way it is and you have to deal with it. Now, I think not ordering DC books is going to be a detriment because these two companies that own the new distribution for DC are both very large online stores, which means if I don't order DC, they're just going to sell it. Now, that being said, since they're also the distributor, they're getting deeper discounts than we are. Mm -hmm. That all, yeah. So the, and that also mm -hmm. means that I am now paying a competitor to be able to carry DC in my mm -hmm. store. Now, these are all very uh, concerning things to a lot of people, and I understand why because. Do I necessarily want a competitor to have all my numbers and know exactly what I'm buying, what I'm spending, what I'm selling? I mean, the answer is obviously no. But if I don't order DC, are they just going to pick up the slack and make even more mm -hmm. off of it because their profit margin is big? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And I and I think the whole anti-DC thing is is not necessarily just a San Diego. None of I haven't seen anyone in Sacramento do it, but um, a certain a certain uh, yeah, mile high. Go and see what their new discount code is this week. Oh, I know. You I see saw their that. <laughs> their opinion on this yep. whole matter. Um, not that I'm trying to give them free publicity, but they aren't very happy about it right now. Now my question yeah. is, I'm not trying to call anybody out because one of the things I love about the comic book community is, as a whole, uh, owners uh, get along very well. We support each other. We do what we can for each oh, other. Yeah. But a large company like uh, Mile High, do you think that they would still be saying the same thing if they had been selected as a distributor? No. 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 <laughs> no. They just probably a little better. But I, I yeah. think also they're... <laughs> Maybe that's why. I, I think also, not in, not to bash on them, but when they left San Diego a couple years ago, Comic-Con and everything, I could see their, their motive and stuff, and they're kind of having a hard time changing with the times, I think. They're not so like you where you can kind of roll with it and go, hey, this is what I got to do. I mean, and uh, I love the industry. This is, And that's one of the things that it really boils down to, and it, it does kind of suck because mo I'd say 95% of the people who are running comic book stores, who are writing comics, who are, are just part of it in general, uh, we, we do it because we love it. Like if, if I didn't want to, uh, you know, work 60 plus hours a week and give up vacations, I, I would go get a, a, a state job here in Sacramento. So mm -hmm. I can understand the frustration um, on some of these retailers when they're like, look, we, we, we bust our ass on a weekly basis and, and they just don't feel like they're getting uh, the, the fair treatment that they want. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's also, it's, it's one of those things where 
you look at it and it's like, okay, now how is this also going to affect? Eventually, it's going to affect the the conventions too. I mean, I know it doesn't affect you directly there, but eventually, if you think about at the conventions, you're going to have where DC has always been connected with certain things there. They may not be because previews is different. You know what I mean? And or Diamond is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the entire market's going to change. I mean, it, everything, yeah. and even prior to this, uh, you know, Marvel canceling books mid run, yeah, and only going digital and saying, "Hey, don't worry, comic shops, we'll give you trades." Well, if I sell fifty copies of uh, you know Jane Foster Valkyrie, I'm not selling fifty trades. So mm-hmm. it's it's just not it's just not going to happen. So. Obvi- the big companies would love to, if you could cut things out and go digital. Uh, it's just the fact of the matter. It's it's big business. AT and T and Disney, uh, they they don't care. Uh, yeah. I don't think a digital market is sustainable, uh, especially for anything other than DC and Marvel. So I'm really hoping that they they find a happy. Market. Yeah, digital like reduces the collectability of anything. Oh, most definitely. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, it's wild. When I when I heard about that, I was just like, like I can't believe it. It's it's nuts. But I can understand from their perspective. But as a collector or comic book reader, I mean, it's I I like that that immediate weekly fix that you get. You know, it's like oh my god, like I can't believe it. And now you have to wait a period of time before you can actually get into it, um, mm-hmm. and then like kind of decompress. I kind of like that those cliffhangers. And let's be honest, um, you know, there, I know all of us, sometimes it's buy books for the cover. Um, so I would say like, uh, I read about a third of my books and a quarter of them I don't read, you know? So like there's, that's a quarter books that could be going towards our shops, right? Um, so that's, shops are losing money there, you know, so. Yeah, and, and it, there there are plenty of people who, uh, who feel the same way I do about it. And it, it, take my bias, because I'm a comic store owner out of it. There is no way that I am gonna sit in front of my computer and read comic books. It's mm-hmm. more than that. It's it's about going down to your local store, meeting other people there, talking, talking to the shopkeep. Uh, it's about flipping the pages. It's about the smell of the old books. It's a tactile thing and it's an event. I don't think that some of the people up at the top who don't care know or think about that, but it's a process and it's something that's very special to a comic book. Well, and, and, like, I, and I kind of look at it like curbside, right? So I was talking to an owner yesterday and he was telling me like, yeah, curbside, curbside was okay. But the thing about it is like when a person comes in and they want that book and they took it, take a look around, they're going to buy five more books than rather that, that one book yeah. that they were asking for, you know? So, I agree with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty. I, I'm guilty. I bought, I went in there for one book and I think I walked out with like 12, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's totally about being able to walk the wall. You can walk the wall. You can see stuff. Yeah. You can flip through it. You can read it. If you just go onto a digital site, you're going to go right for the book you want, and then exactly. you're going to ignore everything else. Yeah, yeah you're down. You walk away. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it's just like the the whole thing about going in there and looking at all these. You know, like you're walking into like a museum, and but you can actually buy the product, right? So. Yeah, and it, I wish like I, like Marvel would understand too that I mean, kind of to like Ian's point is that, you know, you kind of reduce that, that foot tracker that goes into the store. So those people that are buying a cover or buying just that one issue of, of, uh, of Valkyrie will, will miss another Marvel book because it's like, well, I can just get it online. And again, Ben, you mentioned, it's just like, I'm just gonna buy that book and that's it. And there's no browsing. There's no like looking around and seeing, oh my God, that cover looks great. Or, hey, I, that's a new book. I should check it out. But an example of that is Valkyrie, right? I don't read Valkyrie, but I did p- pick up the Peach Pimoco variant, and I haven't even read it, but I picked it up for the cover. So that's a book that I bought that I'm not even reading the book, you know, so. Yeah, and, and di- di- so I'll, I'll say this. Digital, a lot of people when it first started were really worried. They, again, it was a lot of doom saying. I feel that digital combined in a symbiotic relationship with the comic shops can be very good. In fact, the way it's being done now could be modified to help us out a little more, but I know a lot of people who buy their digital comics from like Marvel, they'll redeem their code. They'll take it with them on vacation. Some people 
have gone on vacation, bought a trade from some online digital, and then come in and said, hey, Ben, I want the extra five that are after this. So, so it, 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 mm. it was a new way to interact with the industry that I think could potentially still be good, but 100% digital, I just think is a really bad thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. When they have the digital copy, like for, and Ian mentioned, right, you just buy the book, and you don't kind of flip through it because you don't want to ruin the uh, the mm-hmm. your mint copy. But having that digital code, you can kind of check it out online and read it. And if it's something that, that grabs your attention, you know, you're gonna want to to buy issue number two or three and four, right? Yeah, no well, most definitely. I, I think that uh, up up until this point it has worked very well for both retailers and the publishers. But I think there's also there's as a shop owner, you kind of have to create an environment to get people to come in. Like I know you have your book club. Is it once a month or? Yeah, yeah. With the book club's only once a month because we have so many yeah. events. But I mean, you have all these events that drag or not drag that pull people <laughs> into the shop. <laughs> um, I mean, like you have your art displays. You get local artists and have art displays. You have the book events that get people in there talking about books. Um, and you, there's a lot of displays of, I know like right front register. I saw like, what was the books? Uh, Stomp town because of the local artist. Yep. Um, and there was a couple other books I saw that were right up there that kind of pull your eye. So it's kind of like what you guys are saying of, well, I'm going to go and buy this, but you see these, all these other things. And if you ever yes. go into Ben's shop, you see three shelves behind him of trades. Yep. What do you got up to like 16 of those now? It's, it's pretty intense. It's all over the store. Yes. Uh, cause, but I mean, we have the benefit too. We don't do games at all. We don't do any games. I uh, have a very small selection of toys, um, almost just as a courtesy for, for people who come in, but 95% of what we do, if not more, is, is just free material, whether it's trades, whether it's local books, you know, the wall of comics is just incredible because I really, one of the things I like to do is support independence. So I will order almost everything from previews, even if it's in limited quantities, just to give not only my customers and myself a chance, but also to support them because as a small press publisher, I know just how difficult it can be to get these things out there. And that's what we're, I mean, I'm not doom saying, I told you I was positive, but mm-hmm. you know, digital, that, we're going to lose that. We're not going to be able to see somebody else's vision that they have taken the time and the effort to get printed. We're not going to get to see that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I think some people, I mean, I know I was one of the people when trades started becoming very popular and started pushing trades that I was kind of like, well, there goes the collectability because half the fun for me was going and searching in those back issue bins and finding stuff. Now I can go, Oh, I want to read like Bitterroot that I picked up this week. I don't have to go online to find and go, hey Ben, I want to read this. Do you have a copy of it? You don't have the original issues. Okay, let me just get the trade. Now, do you like that aspect? Did you has it grown on you? A little bit. But the unfortunate thing is probably if I really like the book, I'm probably gonna go try and find those damn single issues. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a preview for me. Yeah, it's uh, a double edged sword there. I'm like yeah, JR. Yeah, I'm just like JR. I mean, I don't want to bust open my God of Thunder book, so I just bought the trades, you know, so. Nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so you, so you do have options. You can still do the collectability and that. And the thing about trades that was, that has been nice because the, we've got a lot of, there's a, there's a certain group um, who are not like us. They don't want to wait weekly. They don't want to hunt down their issues. And, uh, and so they will only buy trade paperbacks. So, so that they have helped immensely, and it's nice that, like Jr. said, and you do, they, they, you have the option of picking it up, but if you still want to track it down, you can definitely uh, get it somewhere. All right. Well, thank you, Ben, for joining us. And you, and you, is there any um, last, you know, um, things you want to t- say about what's going on with DC and and Diamond and Lunar? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that as a, a community, as a business, uh, because we are all, especially Diamond and every local comic book shop, we are all very connected. We are, we are all working together on this. I'm hoping we can find a solution 
outside of any of these, these far reaching horrific events that some people are talking about. Like I said, I'm very positive. I know that the comic industry will survive this, and I know that we will continue to produce great things that people can get a hold of. It might just be a different formula that people need to adapt to, and change with, and come up with new solutions. Well, thank awesome. you, Ben. Thank you, Ben, for joining us. And uh, hey, everybody out there, um, give a shout out to Ben out there in Sacramento. If you're out there, stop by and support um, his shop and other local comic shops. And also remember to hit that uh, like and subscribe button and uh, support your homies over here at Team Nerd Herd. Um, you guys have any uh, any last um, words of wisdom to uh, spread to the comic world and YouTube? Um, like you said, support your local comic shops. Support Ben's. Uh, Empire Comic Vault. Um, also, his hot sauces too. Yeah, hot sauce. Um, <laughs> Pay off those pulls, guys. Pay off those pulls. Yeah. Yeah. Pick up your pulls. Pick up your pulls. Anything, Rob? Before we bounce. Just keep on reading. Read them books. Mm-hmm.